it's the first class in the morning, no problem. This doesn't have any disconnection, so whatever. So I think the problem is that the projector. <laughs> I think it, it is maybe after a long day, two o'clock, the connection seems not not really good because maybe related to how much it will like the output right? because it takes some energy and it, it's exhausted because I think this depends on this also uh, like if it's producing like 1080 or 4k it will be with different energy so maybe that is the problem Okay, so uh, I think I will continue a little bit. Uh, just finish off the triple integrals, just interpret the, the introduction part. And then we can have uh, some uh, problems on the surface area from the previous one. But I will just finish off this part. So the inter triple integrals, uh, the last discussion we have is Basically, we are going to have a, a triple ringlet, this sum, and then we can connect this sum with our limit, then we can rewrite the limit with the integration. That is the, the basic definition on the triple integrals. Then we can, we can just try to work on uh, just a, 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 an example. Okay, for example, here, uh, maybe, Let me write first, go to this one first. Okay. So if we have this triple integral x, y, z squared dv, where b is the rectangular box given by, so it, it's, it has all the numbers. So the box itself is a fixed box, it's a constant. So, and, and we can have with, uh, for example, if we write first the uh, uh, problems, the, the functions. So, since all, all axes is a constant, they, they are all constant, so we can write this B, the endpoints and the order of the integrations. Uh, up, up to us, okay? up to you. So we can write the x, dy, the z, the z, the x, dy. Okay? But my my uh, suggestion is look on what we have here in the functions, and sometimes we can uh, we can prepare the simple integration first, and then uh, we can integrate easily. But now the function, even they are, I think, easily to be integrated, and we can also. So if we so if we try to work out, for example, we try from uh, dx, dy, and dz. So we are going to work on dx first. So dx will be zero one, dy will be negative one and two, z will be uh, zero to three. So if you write this, then we can start take on the inside evaluate and then take the dy, evaluate and then take the z. But in this case, we can also apply our Kubini theorems in this triple integration, which because we have all constant in the endpoint, so we can separate this all this function because we can see that we can separate this x, y, z squared as x, y, and z squared, each one of them. So. We could also write as 0, 3, z squared dz. This will be y, dy. So we can also write like this. Okay. And then we can check. This will be 1 over 3, z cubed. This will be half y squared from negative 1 to 2. This will be half x squared from 0 to 1. So this will be 1 over 3 
multiply 27 this will be 1 over 2 4 minus minus 1 squared is 1 so in half this will be okay so this will be 9 3 over 2 3 over 4 so 3 over 4 or 27 over 4 okay the same result if you if you try from the inside and then and then outside integration you evaluate it will also go to 7 over 4 Okay, I think this is very, very straightforward. You just evaluate and then uh, you get the answer. But now, if we see the other conditions, for example, we're also going to start with this, uh, the general regions, okay, which we have here is the, uh, suppose that we have, now let me write this, uh, as an uh, intro, that the solid E is solid with upper surface Z equal U to XY. So this is a function of XY for Z. And it also has the lower surface which is u1 also a function of xy and then this d that on the below is projection of e on xy plane So there will be several combinations that we might have. Okay, for example, for uh, for the surface, it can be the surface is from here. It can be from here. Okay. Now the, the case input to make it easy, we can start from the z. So let's say we have z has a surface here and another z that is on the top. Okay, which means that if we have triple integrals, the z will be a function of x one. So, if all the other components they are constant, for example, x is constant, y is constant, then we might need this at the inside integration. Okay. So, we are going to write this triple integration. Let me write in more generals from E, like that. And let's say we have x, y, z inside. And this will be dv. So if we try and we define that the z is a function of two variables, so we are going to have these two variables here as our um, endpoints, okay? And then this will be dz and dA. And what is dA? It basically depends on d, okay? It depends on d. If they are both constant, so we don't really much care what the order. It can be the x, y, or the x. Okay. So not a not a problem. So it can be the y, the x. It can be the x, y. The problem is sometimes in uh, the the contextual in the like for example in the textbook or some exercise we are going to see that there will be a function of two variables there will be a function of one variable and there will be a constant the way we take the orders 
always stay in the orders. The inside will be two variables like this. And the second one here will be a function of one variable. And the last one will be the constant. Okay, I, I will give you later um, some context on how to uh, take that as a, um, like a guidelines. Okay. So here we have this um, general expressions. We can have this as a general expression. So this double integral b and an integral with a surface, the lower and the top surface, the functions dz and dA. Okay, the same as, as we wrote. Now, however, this is if the top surface, like this, this is z, right? Z, so, so this is z equal, let's say, function of two variables. Let's say z2, this is z1. Just the same as we did on uh, the first case here. But we could also have something like this. This is uh, parallel to the y-axis. So this could be, we could see that this will be the top now, and this will be the bottom. So this will be y2, this is y1. And this will be a function of xz. This is also a function of xz. Okay. And then we, we could also have this one. This is, let's say, x2. This is x1. So let's say this is a function of yz. This is a function of yz. And the idea is still the same, and it will always work, that the function of the two variables should be integrated inside. And then the second one will be if there is a single variable. And then the last one, the outside, will be a constant. So why we need to take this as an order? Because if we are not look, uh, doing this order, it will not be defined in our volume. Okay? So if you understand what I mean. So for example, if we start this as a constant, then we are not going to define the, the, the boundary for every possible uh, function that is defined the solid, right? So we start to, to define the solid by taking the function of two variables, the surface first, and then we take going zoom in, and then we take the um, single variable, and then finally the rest will be uh, by the number of the constants. And if you see how we process the integrations, if we do the constant first, it will not be solvable. So it, it, we won't be able to solve it. Okay. So so. In order to, to find the exact result of the volume or the solid for uh, the triple integrals, we are going to, like, we need to have the exact number as our final result, right? Because we need to define all the integration process. So that means, intuitively, the constant should be at the outside, because that will be the final result that we expect it results in a number. So if you are going to calculate and then you miss out that the order or maybe some process inside, if you are going like like looping all around, you you didn't find the uh, final result, the final numbers. You need to rework your integration or maybe the order. Maybe there is something wrong in the order. Okay? So that's how we see the the order of the integration. And we could have this as a, as a one case. So we have function of two variables x, y. This will be z. And now we define this is y as a function of x. Okay. So if you write here, this is z. Uh, z is function of 
So z is function of x, y. And here is y is function of x. And the rest, the, the last one will be just the constant x okay, from a to b. Okay? And then this will work, and this will res uh, give you the, um, the final results. Okay? And of course, the other alternative is if you have the order, maybe dz and then dx dy, for example. Okay. This will be the function of two variable, x, y. And then the middle one will be function of, um, function of x, uh, function of y, sorry. So x is a function of y. So let's say we have the h1 y h2 y and this will be let's say um, c to d so we can also write the whole thing dv as that so this is another alternative okay and then the other alternative is we can change this easy okay? so we for example now it's function from x y we can take the function of y z, function of x z, based on the situation. So this could be x y z or y x z. Okay. So there will be at least six alternatives for the order. Yeah, six alternatives. So just a quick guideline that I can give you as a tips. So first is finding upper and lower surface. This is for the boundary. And then make uh, 2D sketches for D, okay? For the, the last double integrals, okay? And this D is our uh, double integrals, okay, and that's it, okay. Just, just these two, and this will be my, my suggestion. So first is finding the surface. The surface will be for this one, and then for the last two, these two double integral. Okay, we make the two these sketches to make sure that we are doing um, doing correctly, and all the endpoints are going to be the same. So basically, this is double integral with the additional integration inside, which is this is the surface itself. Okay. Yeah.
Okay. So next is actually here I put the picture. So this is the last one. So here is how we see the function of y okay, as the boundary in the D. So, so basically, the last two, the, like the outside one, the constant and the function of one variable, this is depends on the sketch here, the D. Okay. This is similar to what we have in the double integrals that we have previously we did. So the, our goal is we first do the inside integration, which is going to be related to the function of two variables that we put into our system. So there will be some like, chunk of equation, like big equation in the inside after we did the first integration. And then the second one, we are going to integrate with respect to the, the, the second one, which is here is the x. And then we expect, after we did all the, the x, we put all the uh, function of y inside, and then the rest we are expecting to have all in terms of y. That is um, the process. So we are expecting the final result before we integrate with, with the constant, the final result will be in one variable y. Okay. So that's, that's how, how we see whether we are doing it correctly or not. So this should be should be on the previous page because I will go through some example. And you need to remember that there will be like a six combination. So for example, this is the so so we've so far we have the Z dz dy dx and then dz dx dy right we might have maybe dx dy dz dx uh, dz dy and then dy uh, dz dx and dy dx dz and how how to work this all this out okay i don't want you to memorize but you need to see this is like a like a like a puzzle game okay so you will see that we need to have first the inside integral need to be function of two variables. Okay. Now the first one that we did is the dz, right? So let me write here. Let me write triple integral or maybe two it's too big. Sorry. Maybe right here. And we don't really care much what kind of function inside here. Now we focus on the endpoint. So if we have dz at the first order, which means that that z will be our function of two variables x y. So the endpoint that is inside here is function of x y. So let's say our function is u. So let's say u um, u one x y, and this will be u two x y okay the second one is dy usually you are going to have a function of x so y is a function of x so this will be function of x so let's write maybe g so g1 x this is g2 x and the rest will be a constant okay maybe going to be here okay now next 
Next is the same. Let me write with the line. Okay. Maybe. Okay. So next will be similar. So it's dz is the first one. So we write the function of two variables x, y. Okay. The middle one should be a function of one variable, but since we have the x as our order, so this will be function of y, okay, x equal function of y. So this should be, let's say, h. Okay, let's, let's write h1, y. This is h2, y. And let's say this is c, d. Okay. And now, we move from dz, to dx as our first integration okay so we write here this is x now. we expect for the triple integral for this endpoint this will be x equal function of two variables what two variables yz so let's just write function of yz uh, maybe we write v so let's say v1 yz v2 yz okay and then the same we have yz dy dz so dy will be a function of z so we could write um, let's say g z and then this is g to z okay, and then maybe this will be uh, z will be maybe r r to s okay And then similar from the other one, this will be phi 1 yz, phi 2 yz. This will be, let's say, h, h1 y, h2 y. And this will be um, c, d. Okay. And then do the same thing with. Uh, the, the last combination so we are going to have um, dy which is a function of xz now it's a function of xz I will write w okay, w1 xz and then this will be function of uh, so this will be function of x so I will write uh, g1x g2x this will be from a to b and the last one this is w1xz w2xz this will be z uh, uh, so x is function of z so maybe write h1z H to Z and this will be R to S. Well the, the name of the function doesn't really matter. This is just some, my, my way to write. As long as this is a function of two variables, this is a function of one variable, this is a concept. This will be the order that we expect we can have a result from this uh, order. Okay. And how to, to process the integration, that will be another story, okay? Uh, so as, but now, we focus on how to uh, write the order, write the order, and what we expect from the uh, endpoints. Okay, next is just of some examples that we might have. So this is an example that we have done. Now try this example two. So we have triple integral, and then the boundary is E, the solid is E, and then it is going to be Z dV, okay, Z dV. So E is the solid in the first octant, bounded by, it's giving you some idea there. We have the surface, 
and the other boundary will be just a plain y equal x and x equal 1. I think it's quite simple to imagine and to draw that we, we might to do so for the drawing. But since we have the surface is 12xy, we can focus first draw this draw, draw in the two dimension yx. So y equal x and then x equal one, x equal one will be here. So it will be a triangle like this one. Let me put this picture up like this. So this will be the D, so y equal x, and then this is x equal 1. Okay. And if you would like to draw, this is how it looks like, the Z. So we would like to find this volume of this E. So what is the upper surface? The upper surface will be this, which is the 12x1. What is the bottom surface? The bottom surface is just this. All is plain, so Z equal 0. So we can start from 0 to 12 xy for the first integration, the endpoints. And the second one, we could start from this d. Okay. If either we could start 0 to 1 or x, that is our constant. And then 0 to function of x. Right. So y equals 0 until y equals x. Okay. So we could write down the formulations. We write the this first the so before you try to compute the integrations, just focus on the order first, okay? Because that will be the very very important okay, important part. So the order first is the surface, so this will be 0, and this will be 12xy, okay? The first one is dz, so this will be z, dz, right? If you're still maybe not sure yet, you can write maybe just da, and then this is d, okay? And then you can work out the d. And I think we could start dy dx or dx dy, the same thing that we did in the double integrations, right? So it's, it's up to you. So for, for example, in my case, I will write z dz. I will write the uh, dy dx because I would like to start the 0, 1 for the x and then uh, 0 and x for the y. And I think we can try to solve it now. Maybe I will solve through here. So if we try to compute, this will be z squared over 2 from 0 to 12xy. Okay, and then this will be dy dx. And let me move half, go there. So 12 x y, um, so 12 squared is 144. I will move 144 outside. So 144 divided by 2 is 72. So this will be z squared, so x squared, y squared, and then dy dx so I will uh, take the integration for y this is 1 over 3 oh I forgot the this is 72 so we have now dx this is from 0 to x so as we expect, we are going to have um, the final result, which is all in x variable. So this is 24. This is x with power of 5, right? So 24 over 6. 
this is x this is 4 okay final result is 4 okay, yes so how 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 do you write the interval of y is 0 to x the, the interval y oh yeah. this one yes okay so that one is from this D, okay? So this is up, up to us, okay? So if we state that the constant is 0 and 1 for x, so that's the x, okay? So the y will be, y equals 0 is this one, right? And then it's moved to where? To this line, right? To y equals x. So y equals 0 to y equals x. So this is actually like this. So this is actually like, this is y equal, y equal, this is x equal, this is x equal, this is z equal, right? Okay. How about if we switch? Okay. If we switch. So if we switch, let's say we are going to take the constant y, okay? So let's say it's the, the, uh, we state from 0, 1 is the uh, dy, and how about the, oh, to, to maybe need to be a little bit longer. How about the x? The x start from, from here, but this is not exactly zero because it start from here and then go here. So it start from x equal y. So it start from y to um, x equal y. So this will be y one the x. You can you can try to check that out. It will do the same result. Okay. So this is I think you need to be like familiar with this. So you can start. Uh, this is uh, zero. Okay. Zero to one. Okay. 0 to 1. So we start from uh, y to 1 and then 0 to wait. Maybe. If we start from 0 here. Oh yeah, it's correct, it's correct. Uh, I afraid that I make this triangle, not this triangle, is it? So, so can you check? So if I take zero, zero to one, so y, So x will be from x equal y until 1. Okay, so that will be that. Yeah, it should be, it should be correct, right? But I think the better perspective is making the x a zero one. It's I think more clear, and I agree that it's confirmed. But for the x dy, okay, Other triangle, the x will be zero to one. 
this is one to one. So it means this one go to here, and this will be go to there. Okay. Yeah, I think it's correct. Yeah, right? Okay. Because if we, let's say we have this triangle here, the red one. If we have this triangle, the x will be from x equals zero, this one, until this line, right? Yeah, I think it's correct. Professor, yes. So, so when we do the integral, so we want to cut this whole the area of the, the, the triangle there, right? Yeah, this is for the D. <coughs> D is for the last two. This one. Oh, okay. The last two. This one oh. is this. So this is the tri triple, triple. So double integral, we compute for Triple integral, we also compute for but with different respect. The same expected volume. That's the second example. Yes. Yeah. yeah, at least the graph for the P. At least. Because usually the surface is easily to be observed. That is that is the, the way we see. So uh, for sure the B is going to be like you need to draw this because sometimes you will feel this difficulty in finding which one you need to take the y the x or the x one. So first, if the so the, the, the question already given you um, the surface, right? And usually it will be given and you can observe directly the surface. For example, this is the first surface of function of x1, okay? and you can easily see. Sometimes if it is given you as function of yz, it means that you need to like uh, uh, to check the, uh, the d. And sometimes it's not x1, maybe if yz, maybe this will be uh, yz or xz, it depends on the question. But you need to like draw this first. There will be more complicated sections after this. It, uh, we have triple integral, and in triple integral, if we want to change the order of integrations, it's, uh, it's a little bit complex. It's a little bit complex. Because we need to project the, this three dimension. We need to project from the top, see from this one, and see from that one. And so we have three projections x y y z x z and then we need to, to to see all of this projection and make sure that if we change the order it's still the same graph so, uh, but if, if uh, today we have a function of uh, maybe x z uh, we, uh, we, we need to uh, draw. draw a graph but is it? Uh, same, same like this, same like this, but maybe different axes. Just a quick notes on the graphs on uh, what kind of possibility that we might have. I have mentioned this before, so we can have uh, like at least six combination of the order. So this is if we have like function of two variables y z, function of two variables x z. Okay? As long as we can define the d, we can uh, solve the problem. So first, maybe write just the function of two variables first. 
and then just write the last two integrals as just b, and then we draw the d, and then we find and decide which one we take. For example, here's the dy, so we can start to look uh, maybe dz dx or dz or dx dz. So it depends on uh, d. Okay? It depends on d. Uh, another example here is we have. Evaluate triple integrals. Uh, we have square root x squared plus z squared uh, dv. And then uh, what we care for the drawing is not the function inside this triple integrals. What we need to focus is the, the region. The region means the boundary. So the boundary, we have the paraboloid y equal x squared plus z squared and y equal 4. So if I think if it is simple enough, we can draw the whole thing. But if not, maybe focus only for the, uh, the area, the D. Okay. So I think we can draw this, right? Which means that if we have the paraboloid y equal x squared plus z squared, it means that this paraboloid has a center, the backbone is y, right? So we can write and maybe just draw directly. As long as you understand the area and the boundary, it should be okay. Like, I don't really care much on like how good your drawing is. <laughs> <laughs> but but if, if, if it is helping you, that is okay. But actually what we care much is the boundary. So let's say this is the... That is the paraboloid. And let's say this is the, the uh, 4, the, the plane, right? The plane um, y equal uh, 4. So this is the paraboloid, um, y equal x squared plus... Uh, z squared, right? Maybe uh, it's not symmetrical. Let me make it symmetrical. Maybe still not symmetrical, but I, anyway. So let's say we have another one here, just to just to make sure that I, I draw correctly. So this will be having that. Okay. Now this is our D, okay, this is our D. So if you look our D, this will be in X, Y, okay? So we have So this will be uh, Y equal 4 And the rest will be this way So the Curve will be y equal x squared, right, for this one. Now, of course, if we are going to find the whole volume of this, then we could think this part as our lower surface, and this will be the upper surface which we are going to take the square from that y. So z, so, so from, from y equal x squared plus z squared, we could take z plus minus y minus x squared. So we have the top will be positive z and the bottom will be negative 
okay so we are going to have uh, the description for the E based on this information only So D is when when Z is z zero. So when when Z is zero, Y is four, X can be plus minus two. Okay? Just plug in one by one, we get that information. So we have the X is from negative two to positive two. And then y will be from x squared, okay, from the curve. So x squared less equal y less equal 4. And z is from the negative. So it's quite complex, seems. So all this order, okay. And then based on what we have before we can write this whole formula and this is the hard way okay, the hard way I will show you the simpler way so we start from negative 2 to 2 for x and then x squared to 4 for y and then the negative y minus x squared positive y minus x squared this will be x squared plus z squared this is dz this is dy this is the x now of course this is something that we need to avoid okay? something that we need to avoid okay? working on this although this is a correct integration but this is something that we need to avoid in our if we work out on some exam or problem because this one this one like if we have a square root inside the endpoints you need to be to be aware and you need to be cautious. I think most of the of the time, if you see this, then it means that we can convert it to polar. And that is how we are going to solve this problem. We convert to polar every everything that has x squared plus z squared we can define as a circle equation. Right? So we can define this as a as a circle. But we need to be careful which one is which. So we need to maybe going to see that so let, let me draw again the the graph the same paraboloid here so let's say this is uh, let's say that is our uh, paraboloid like that okay so this is four now we are going to project the this paraboloid to the xz so this is z this is x this is y so we are going to project to xz so we are going to have That is the, I think that will be the, our projection on XZ. So we say that this will be our, our also our D. Okay. And this D is based on the circle equation X squared plus Z squared equal 4. Okay. How to get 4? Four? 4 is from this point of view. So we are going to have um, 
the d in in z x graph okay and this will be negative 2 this will be 2 so this will be d so x squared plus c squared equal 4 So we can write down this will be so we can write this d first and we concentrate on the first uh, integration inside so how do we write this okay. so we expect this to be now is in terms of uh, dy Things will be dy. So we are going to see dy will be this x squared plus z squared, okay? Until four, okay? So x squared plus z squared goes here until four, okay? So y equal x squared plus z squared is the parabolic, right? When the uh, y equal 4, the projection will be exactly this. So the d will be exactly this. So we can see that from 0 to 4, this could be, if we take the y only, we could say that this will be from x squared plus z squared until 4. Let me just write first this. This will be dy and then dA. Okay. So we can reintegrate first with respect to y. So we add y and then because it's only y so we can write the whole component here 4 minus x squared plus c squared and then the a and this d we can choose now d we can choose from our original perspective here which give you this, which give you this, uh, dy dx, or we could see from our circle equation and describe this in terms of radius and pi. So 0 to 2, and then 0 to 2 pi for the circle. So we could just do that. Okay. So we could take that and write here as maybe let me write here ah, sorry precise a little bit go here a little bit okay so we could write here we can exchange the xz plane so xz Convert to polar. So x is r cosine theta. And it, this is not y now, it's z. Okay? I hope you understand what y is z because we have the circle. This circle. Not this one. Not x, y. So it's x, z plane. So we convert. And then we give that this will be um, 
x squared plus z squared is r r squared and square roots will become r and this will be 4 minus r squared and then don't forget we multiply again with r the r the theta and this will be 0 2 pi and 0 2 and solve since there is no theta we, I can take theta on the front and this will be 4r minus or maybe let me um, r squared so 4r squared minus uh, r with power of 4 right? and then dr so this will be 2 pi 4 over 3 r cubed minus r with power of 5 over 5 from 0 to 2 so 2 pi multiply with 4 over 3 multiply with 8 minus 32 over 5 so 32 over 3 minus 32 over 5 okay if you are in the exam if you stop here it's okay <laughs> but if you want to calculate it calculator is that you can do that I think it should be 15 uh, 160 96 so 64 so 1 2 8 15 5 okay so yeah it's combining all the knowledge you have from the double integral, the polar, within the triple integral. So this one question will combine everything from the previous one. So we're gonna have like a more practice on this, okay? So before we move to uh, another application, which is changing the order of integration, which requires a lot of focus and attention, that I think we don't have now. So I, I will I will give you more practices first, and then maybe next week we can continue to that part. So let me continue the practice on this the previous the yesterday class, the surface area, maybe two or three example. Okay, maybe from here. Is there any question that you think we can solve? Which one? This is all about the surface area. The surface area. Seven? Seven is here. Okay. So the part of the paraboloid, one minus x squared minus y squared, lies above the plane z equal minus two. So z equal minus two will be the the bottom part. Okay. So how do we make up our uh, uh, supposed to be this question? So we could see that uh, we have the paraboloid and we don't really like we don't really want to know like how the graph looks like because uh, it practically practically what we need in the surface area we need to know the the function so the function will be so if we have this like z equal this it means that we treat z in a function of two variables x one right so we we have function of two variables so what we need next is that function we are going to take partial, take partial x, partial y, because the 
requirements on the surface area, we need to take the partials and then take the square and then plus one, right? And then take the square root. That's it, the, 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 the surface area. But we need to know, like, how about the intersection? Now we have a plane here. So suppose the plane is going to be here, and this will be the paraboloid. Remember that we are going to project this paraboloid into the, the bottom part, which is this one. So we could have negative two, if we put here, we get our intersection, which is some, some sort of area, right? So let's do that. So in, we, first we take the intersection when z equal negative 2, so negative 2, 1 minus, or this will be x plus y squared, and it's equal 3. So it's a circle, circle with a radius of square of 3. So the next thing is, so let's say we have the function, let me write the function first. And let's just take the partial for x is negative 2x, partial y is negative 2y, okay? So the area, so if we're still not sure about the endpoints, just write as d first, okay? But because we have a circle that perhaps we are going to take the polar uh, curves, right? Our polar coordinates. So take partial x, partial y, and then just write the A, okay? So solve it first, simplify it, and see if we can, so both are four X squared, four Y squared, so four, I can write this like that, and then the A. Or I will maybe, I will now directly try to write, um, or maybe, or maybe just the A first, the A first. This is the. And now I would like to convert to polar. So this will be four R squared plus one, okay? And then we have the circle. X squared plus Y squared equal three, which means this, the radius is squared of three. And since there are no mentioning about any restriction left, so we could just assume that the radius from zero to square of three and 0 to 2 pi, this full circle. Unless maybe if they give you more information, maybe if it's not a full circle, maybe only half part, sometimes they give you that, those kind of information. So we need to check the uh, information first. So it's because there's no restriction, so we could just assume it will work out from 0 to 2 pi and 0 to square root of 3. So this is r, dr, d theta. And how to solve this? And basically, most of the time, on the surface area, this is my tips, you, you will be expecting this part can be solved by substitution, most of the time. Because it has a square root, and usually it has a square inside. And then when you convert, especially when you convert to polar, you will see the r. And you can see that this is for r squared, which you can as a substitution. So take Q substitutions. So let's say we have uh, 4 R squared plus 1. So D will be 8 R uh, DR. So we are going to have 1 over 8. It starts from squared of U, but I would like to skip all this process and I will write U because this will be 3 over 2, okay, because half plus 1, and this will be 2 over 3, right? And then this U, I will change back to the 4 R squared plus 1, 3 over 2, and then this will be plug in that way, and then the theta, I will move in the front, and this is just 2 pi, right? 2, so 2 pi, okay, and then this cancel. So 1 over 12, cancel. So 1 over 6. So one uh, pi over 6. 
and then plug in so 3 4 12 plus 1 is 13 so 13 square of 13 and then plug in 0 is 1 so minus 1 and that's it this is the area Maybe one more or two more question from this part here. Maybe from this, from eight to 14. Any suggestion? Oh. Maybe. From eight to 14, which one? Surface, you have the end point 0, 1, 0, 4, x, y. But let me write first the function. And, and do I need to write here? Let me write here. So, number 10. So, number 10 is z is 2 over 3, x 3 over 2 plus. And this z is function of two variables, of course, right? Let's just say we take the partial first. So partial x. So 3 over 2, cancel, cancel. Uh, minus 1 will be half, right? So this will be square of x, right? Right? And partial y, the same. 3 over 2, cancel, cancel. So minus 1 is half. So, square of y. And then since we have the endpoints are exactly 0 to 1 for both x, y. So, we could just write, write it down, right? So, we get a is d and then this will be So this will be x plus y plus 1. Let's say dy dx, 0, 1, 0, 1. I think it takes time to solve this, but we can try. So let's say we are taking um, x plus y plus 1. Integrate this. So 
So we focus now on only dy. So everything that, for example, the x will be a constant, right? So if we take u as our substitution, and we take the u, this will be dy, right? So this is actually the same as u with power of half, and this is the u. Oh, I think this is quite easy, I think. So this one will be integrations plus, so 2 over 3, multiply, x plus y plus 1, this will be 3 over 2, uh, from 0 to 1, and this will be dx. Okay, so first we compute first. I will write uh, 2 over 3 outside and then plug in 1 and 0 to y so this will be x plus 2 3 over 2 minus x plus 1 3 over 2 and the same thing we take another uh, substitutions let's say um, v for both cases so maybe the left one first so let's say this is x plus 2 d3 is dx so this is actually acting as a own integration so it's very similar to the first one so this will be giving you so 2 over 3, this will be 3 over 2 plus 1, right? So it will be 5 over 2, so 2 over 5 here, and this will be x plus 2, uh, 5 over 2 minus, this is another 2 over 5, x plus 1, 5 over 2, from 0 to 1. Okay, so... So 2 over 3, this will be 2 over 5, 3, 5 over 2, minus 2 over 5, 2, 5 over 2, minus the 0. 0 will be 2 over 5, 2, 5 over 2, 2 over 5, yeah, this, yeah, this is the result. And you need to compute if you want, but I am lazy, so I will just stop here. <laughs> <laughs> but do you get it? It's quite. A, it seems like x plus one plus one divided by x. What I did is I just changed this into substitutions u, and then I know that we need to focus on the dy first, which means like a part in partial, the x when we derive x will be a constant, so the u is dy, okay? And the rest of it is we just plug in. And the same thing with the x plus 1 and x plus 2 here. We can do the same substitution. I, I, I don't write all, all the steps here. But basically, we are just seeing this as a one variable. This is a one variable. Okay? And we treat that, and we get the 2 over 5, x plus 2, 5 over 2, and the other one, okay? x plus 1, 5 over 2. And then the rest will be just plug in 1, which is here. Plug in zero, which is this one. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. So, how how do you get the x plus y plus one? Uh, in here? Oh no, no. Uh, this one? Y yes, yes. That's yeah, one. this one is from this u. So u power half, oh. and then the y is the f the u. So the u. So this will be just integration. This. So this will be two over three u three over two, right? So basically, this u is this. So that's how. how. Uh, but, but like, how about the the above line, the i one from the from the i equal to, and then how do you get this that? one? Okay. Uh, For this one. I. 
from here, how, how do you get this one? Oh, this is just in the square. Oh, and then. Oh, yeah, the right. Oh, right. Oh, right. 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 Maybe one last question. Number 40. So let me write in the new page. Number 14, we have a sphere. Sphere, okay. And the sphere is x squared plus y squared, z squared equal is another constant that went for z, so another variable. And then it says that the sphere is inside this paraboloid. So the sphere, <coughs> this is a 4z, this is not in the center of origin, right? So it's shifted a little bit in the z axis, right? So it's not really sphere, and the middle one is 0, 0. It's, it's not, it's shifted. But now we have this x squared plus y squared parabola. Right? So what does it mean? We could start to see first is the sphere. We could write the sphere as z squared minus 4z and then write 0 first and then we could uh, take the uh, complete the square for the sphere equation so this will be y squared plus this will be z minus 2 squared so because the z minus 2 it will be a plus 4 right so plus 4 plus 4 so we have this is equal 4 so this is a sphere with radius 2 and the center will be 0 0 2 so it's shifted upwards okay shifted upwards and then what's next the next is this this sphere this ball is inside the paraboloid so we could take the um, so the paraboloid z and then we could exchange this into our sphere or the, from the sphere to the parabola the paraboloid is the same so i will take this into here which we get um, z plus um, z minus 2 squared equal 4 and then we could solve this um, z squared minus 2z plus 2 so we have z squared um, z squared minus um, minus z right Or maybe not, not maybe, maybe just uh, write maybe here, here. Maybe easier to compute to sphere is maybe let me write here. Let me write again the sphere, maybe that way. Sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equal 4z. So I will take this and exchange with that. Or maybe not this. Maybe maybe just this one is easier. Okay, I will find. So z plus z squared equal four z. So z squared minus three z equal to zero. 
So z is c minus 3. So z is 0 or z is 3. Okay, so we have the plane. So this plane is plane where surface um, intersects. So if you if if you want to draw, you can draw maybe like that, and the ball is maybe here. Okay. And from this ball, we have maybe from there. This is the plane, and we have this second plane. So this is z equal zero. This is z equal three. And when z equal 3, you could see that in our equation, this will be equal to 3. Okay. So it, it means that the, um, the upper surface is intersect with this, um, the ball. And then we can write another equation here that we can start to write z minus 2 squared equal 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay. And we could see that this could be written as in, uh, so we can have a polar equation here. So we can write here z is 2 plus 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Now why the square root? I will take only the positive one because we have only the, the, the positive one on the, um, on the picture. So we are going to take the circle based on this equation. Okay. So the area of the surface. We take the um, if we take the partial the partial x so over um, square root. 4 minus x squared minus y squared. This is 2, negative 2x, right? And the partial y, this will be negative 2y. Okay, 
okay this is a little bit too crazy for the question <laughs> let me write here one by one so this is if we write in the xy but we are going to change to polar i think so the square plus Now this will be, we are going to change to polar. Okay, we are going to change to polar. So first we take the square, this is x squared, y squared. So x squared plus y squared is the same denominator. So this will be, let me just write here first. So x squared plus y squared over equivalency from the surface area in x, y. We don't have the equivalent formula for that x, y into polar directly. So what we can do is we write first the formulation and then change the polar. So if you try, for example, if you try to convert this to polar, then you will find it difficult to make it into our surface area equation. What is the partial x? What is partial y? Right? Okay. Because we need to make sure that the surface area is in terms of partial x squared plus partial y squared plus one dn. We don't have the equivalency in the polar in terms of surface area. What we can do, however, when we solve in the process, after we put into the surface area formulation, then we can do the polar. So I think I will leave this to you. So this will be. 0 2 pi 0 squared of 3 this is r dr uh, d theta and then you can exchange this into r squared and this will be 4 minus r squared square root okay. oh we still have the square root don't forget <laughs> okay yeah any questions Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> 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 one question takes too, make too, too many times. <laughs> yeah, too, too crazy, too crazy if this is exam. For practice, okay, for practice. But maybe for the exam, this is just like the, the previous one, like this. I think this one. No question. So I will think I will end and then this will be the QR code. Oh yeah. If you haven't checked your quiz, then I have it here. You want to check your score. Yeah, the Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, not this one. Uh, which one we have here? Forgot, maybe. Oh, here one. Yeah, this one. 
and that scene is from house. We got this in the from here. Yeah, from there one. Yeah. So this one is from because here is Y, right? Yeah. So oh, I I, I, I want to know why. How do we know to put the Y at first? Because you you say this this has two. It's it's because from here x squared plus y z squared and also from this um, this I think from here from here uh, this is a function of two variable x z. Oh yeah. So we okay, yeah. we okay. find it. In so this is x, this is two kind of the so so so. Yeah yeah you can use, yeah but and but this is quite difficult right. Yes yes. Okay so we do so it this do, way. do do polar in the polar. And Okay, and then my question is, what? Uh, how do we know the interval is like this? So actually, this one yeah. is y, right? Yeah. Y, and we we only know the plane is n at y equal four. Oh, yeah, yeah. But we know that y also can be in our paraboloid, right? Yeah. And our paraboloid is this, so we can just put that, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. That is our restriction, right? Uh, the, yeah. The thing is inside this paraboloid. Because y is function two variables, we could think like function of two variables, just like we did the function of x y. So you could, you could maybe you could start from like this y one to y two. Y two is a fixed plane y equal four. Because I was thinking like, it didn't shouldn't it be found from zero to four? If you could, if you start from zero, that means you would need to compute the whole thing like a box. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, you get it? Oh, because it is parabola, so yes, we should yes, 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 because curve to the yes. same form. Yes. Okay, like I. Okay. Yeah, I think then the problem is solved. <laughs>